something special inside you. Welcome to GNG Podcast with your host, speaker, best-selling author, Chaz Jackson. Yo, yo, what's going on, kings and queens? It's your boy, Chaz Jackson, coming back to you once again. Representing GNG, gifting that gift. Hey, I personally just want to take the time to tell each and every one of you, thank you for giving me your eyes and your ears once again. It's great to dive deep into some inspiration that I pray will plant like a seed in your mind and assist you in becoming a greater version of yourselves. So if you've been tuning to GNG podcast, you know that our model here is we're all gifted differently to make a difference. And I know there's a ton of difference makers that's tuning in right now. If you're listening to us on Facebook live stream or a replay, or if you listen to us on one of the podcast platforms, again, let us know you're there. Thank you. Uh, share this out. Get this message in front of each and every person that you feel will be able to resonate with my lady, Wendy Mangello. She is going to be talking on the theme. Everyone has a story to tell, and I'm excited to get this amazing woman on this camera in your ears to provide tips and techniques on how you can grow in your personal development. But before I read off her short bio, I want to go over the mission of GNG Podcast, and it is to provide tips and techniques for young adults as they strive to grow in personal development. And I want to challenge you, if you're a returning listener or if this is your first time listening to GNG Podcast, to take the daily challenge with me. I challenge myself first, but uh, I challenge you with the daily challenge of becoming a passionate visionary who is determined to leave a legacy for themselves by adopting unwavering life values and serving others in the area of gifting led by God. So that is the mission statement that we take here on GNG Podcast. Again, I invite you to take that daily challenge with me. And this amazing uh, speaker that's about to come on, give some value, is taking that daily challenge. And Wendy is currently involved in human resources as a director in a large school district in Florida. And she has over 27 years of education experience uh, being uh, fulfilled with uh, many accomplishments as far as certifications. Also, uh, she's a part of a pageant and I'm, I'm excited to hear more about that as well. But her ultimate goal and mission is to bless others. And she truly believes everyone has a story to tell. And I'm excited for her to share her story more with this audience here on GNG Podcast. And Miss Wendy Mangello, you are live on GNG Podcast, episode 34. Are you ready to get it, my lady? Yes, I am ready. Very excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And I know what I read off when you was short and sweet. Is there anything else that you would like to add to what I shared uh, that the audience should know? Well, <laughs> I, I think you got the gist of it. Um, I've had a long career in education. So uh, as you can imagine, I have a lot of stories to tell. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm sure not all for tonight. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I do feel like my, my personal mission for many years has been to be a blessing to others. And my hope is to inspire others to tell their story because um, everybody's got one. I like that. And I want to encourage you to dive a little bit deeper. Can I share your story of how did you get to being in education for this a long period of time? And and I know, again, you've, you've facilitated and worked in pageants with hundreds of uh, kids in the past. And, and I want you to dive into Chapter 52 as well. I know you've... <laughs> Some writing and some journaling and blogging and the whole nine yards. Can you share a little bit more about yourself with the audience or your story? Sure. sure. Um, you know, I started off as a journalism major in college because I wanted to write for a living. And uh, I got really frustrated with the process and um, kind of abandoned that idea and decided to go into education. And I decided to go into special education. That's where I started my career teaching students with special needs, most students that have um, that had behavior uh, problems. And um, while I was teaching, um, I started a dance team in an elementary school. 
And uh, they competed in the AAU Junior Olympics for five years and won gold medals in dance. And uh, that was a really exciting time. And I'm still friends and still keep in contact. A lot of those kids that are grown have their own children right now. Um, I decided I wanted a greater impact. And so I went back to school to get my ed leadership degree, master's degree, and, uh, and wanted to lead a school. So I became an assistant principal and then principal. And when I became a principal, it was the time of my life that I think was the most impactful and influential that I had on, on children and students. Um, most of my career has been in schools where students struggle um, and where students live in poverty. So we call those Title I schools. And so I spent most of my career um, working and, and I felt like that was my that was my niche. That is where I loved to be. Um, I felt like that was where I was most, the best place I could serve. So in my career as a principal, um, I had some challenges uh, running difficult schools. Um, this, there was a time where I had a student. Um, I, was, I was just kind of reminiscing about this today. Um, who was um, shot and killed in gang crossfire, gang mm -hmm. uh, crossfire that was happening. Um, he would have been about 23, 24 years old today. And that was a huge loss. And th they don't teach you any of that in school. You know, when you go to college to become an educator or a principal or a teacher, or whatever, they don't train you on how to deal with the death of a student. It was very tragic. And um, it was a very trying time um, because I had to be strong. I had to be strong for my kids in my building. I had to be strong for the parents that were concerned. I had to be strong for the, um, the staff and the teachers. It was, it was a very difficult time. But through that, one of the things I realized is a lot of our kids um, needed an outlet to talk and to be able to talk through their fears and talk through their lives. And so we started a movement at my school uh, where we were helping children just to become writers. Mm -hmm. And at first, the, the kids, it was very, they were very reluctant. They would stare at a page. They would, I, you know, I remember seeing kids just sitting in their desk, staring at a blank piece of paper because they couldn't put the words on paper. So one of the things I thought about doing is um, I created a little suitcase <laughs> it's a little blue suitcase and I threw every all these things I had saved from when I was five years old all these different writing pieces books I made and I threw it into a suitcase and I went classroom to classroom and I unpacked my life as a writer and I showed them how you know very simple my writings were until I grew up and had you know you know long long pieces of writing and so that in itself inspired kids to write and inspire them to start telling their stories. Once we got those ideas, then we were teaching them how to put details and how to paint the picture and really be able to tell their story. So that's kind of where that, you know, the whole idea, I've always loved writing, I've always wanted to be a writer. Um, and through education and being an educator, that's how I did that. And then later on, um, I'm in the role I'm in right now. Um, in human resources. And so I have a different role in the district, um, but just at a different level. And um, this past year, in the middle of all this COVID pandemic, um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Wow. And so I had um, a little bit of a battle this summer. And um, I decided that it was time for me to, to do what I really am passionate about. So I turned 52 in September and I started a blog called uh, Chapter 52 and just started to, you know, start putting out some of my writing and telling my story and then also somehow embedding in there some leadership and, and really helping people to and inspire people to, to, to do greater things. And um, I know you mentioned pageants. <laughs> that no. was the thing I did on the side. Um, I was involved in uh, Miss America preliminary pageants. I competed when I was in college and then later on worked and coached young women 
and uh, to to aspire to be, you know, either a Miss Florida or a Miss America. And uh, that was very rewarding as well because um, even though I competed when I was younger, I never won a title. And um, but I felt like the skills and the lessons that I learned involved in, you know, interviewing, speaking in front of people, that whole thing, that that gave me lifelong skills that I'll, that'll, that'll, that was better than the crown. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, that communication. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking a little bit more about that. And I took so much uh, from what you shared just from the experiences with the young people, the individual that got shot and, and how you allowed and and teached and showed action to be honest like you took action by bringing in what you was writing but i know for me you know when i started to begin to write and journal and 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 really express my thoughts put them in i, I know i shared on a previous episode about how i carry around like just a little black notepad and <laughs> and i just kind of jot down things and and that, that's definitely a, a, a way to really open up and to be able to get your feelings out on paper. It, yeah. it kind of keeps you in the mind of just talking and, and becoming more vulnerable and, and truly understanding how to share your story. And and I'm really inspired to, to see how you, again, mm-hmm. took action and brought that whole suitcase. Do you know how many letters you had in there? Or was it was it a lot? There was a lot, you know, I, it, I told it through my years. So I started off with these little books that my mom had saved that I, you know, I just drew pictures, you know, and um, so I've, it's always been a passion, books and writing, that sort of thing. And I, I shared these goofy little stories that I had written and made little books and kids thought it was hilarious because they could relate. Right. They could relate and they saw me as somebody they could relate to now because I was like them at one time. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it's like you, you've got authentic with them. And again, you took action by showing, hey, if I can do this, you can do it. And that's yeah. and a lot of times with our young people, you know, and, and, and even picking on myself, even thinking back when I was a teenager, you know, you, you want to play this unique role. I talk about it in my book, Little Learn, Lead Powerfully, uh, thinking you're the only person going through certain situations or you're the only person that cannot overcome a barrier or obstacle. And just thinking in senses of writing, like that barrier of, oh, I cannot do this. But you sharing with your students kind of ignited like, hey, man, maybe I can do this. Look at all this stuff that Miss uh, Wendy had you know, written and how she's becoming more vulnerable and just opening up and sharing, hey, she was just like us at one point, you know, she's <laughs> not on this super scale that we're, we're holding her to. She's awesome. But at the same time, she, she's willing to uh, come down to our level and, and be able to, you know, relate and expose herself and, and uh, be able to be uh, the amazing person that I am. So that's that's really good stuff. That's really good stuff. I like yeah. that. And uh, yes, you being a fighter and overcoming uh, the barrier of the cancer as well. So we're in remission with that, right? That's- yes, actually, yesterday I had my uh, six month mammogram and it was all clear. So, nice. um, so all the healing is good. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, as far as, you know, the writing and and getting discipline on being a teacher, is, is there a certain routines or rituals that you can share with the audience that you do to to keep you in a consistent basis with writing and and uh, you know going after because I know you are a part of John Maxwell team as well right yeah. so five yeah. members so definitely I know yeah. you're huge in the leadership role as well so as far as you know getting to where you are right now is there any rituals or routines that you do you know to start your day that yeah. helped you to get to where you are today? I, I do. I am. Um, uh, I journal every single day. Um, it may not be a long journal piece. It may just be quick thoughts. But what I had found is um, I get up every morning and I have to kind of do like this brain dump because so much is going in my brain. I'm, I'm a morning person. And so the moment my eyes are open, the brain is going. And so I, I'm always afraid I'm going to forget something. So the first thing I do is after my shower is I sit down and I journal. Um, I do that brain dump. And from there, I prioritize the things that I need to get accomplished for the day. And I try to keep it very intentional, very focused. 
So I do a little bit of journaling. On the weekends, I have a little bit more time, so I journal a little bit more. Um, but I basically take my, I look at my priorities of my day and I break them down into home and health um, work and what I call the next chapter. And the next chapter is, um, like you talked about, the John Maxwell team uh, working on my blog. So every day I'm intentional working towards what I really want to accomplish in, in, in that, you know, creating a new business um, and inspiring others. And then the other thing I add is um, I always add a section in my journaling called Add Value. And I try to put a person or people's names there to remind myself to add value to that person, whether it be um, a conversation, whether it be a phone call, whether it be a text, um, whether it be writing them a thank you card. I try to be very intentional about adding value to others. Nice. So it's like you pick you pick a individual for that day or that week and you reach out. Is it like somebody that's real close or at work? It just kind of switches up. Is that pretty much all over? It yeah. depends. It's really, you know, do you like, ever wake like up? And, is, do you ever wake up and there's just somebody on your mind or somebody on your heart? Yeah. And so that's where it, where it kind of goes from. Um, I had a friend just recently who reached out to me to let me know that um, she's going to be having some major surgery. They have, she has cancer. And um, so I put her name down and, you know, text her, how you doing? How, how are you feeling? And I think I have to be intentional like that because in my position I'm in right now, I get so, so busy and caught up in the minutia that I forget about people. And so I, ha I try to be very intentional with that. Um, so if somebody's on my mind or somebody's in my heart, um, I write that down for the day and say, I'm going to add value to that person today. I really like that. And it takes me into this question. So I know you said you primarily worked in like Title One school districts where, you know, you, you, you met a lot of kids that grew up in unstable environments or growing up in unstable environments. And I know you kind of shared how, you know, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. This is what I kind of took from it was, you know, some of your students was kind of in an isolated state, but you opened them up to be able to write. Now, I know the theme of this whole episode is everyone has a story to tell. So what does that mean to you speaking to that one teacher or parent or coach that's listening to you right now that's maybe dealing with a kid that's in an unstable environment and they want them to ignite and share their story better? Can you... Mm -hmm. There's something in that regards of how to get to that point. I, I think it's all about um, allowing that child to have a voice. And I think so sometimes children are just kind of lost in society, especially children who are living in a struggling environment or, or environment of poverty or environment of, you know, unstableness that um, they don't have a lot of control in their lives. And um, one thing they can control is that inner voice mm. and being able to bring out that inner voice, even if it's just writing it out on paper, um, even if it's giving I've given kids journals, you know, kids that were really struggling with some inner turmoil. It's like, here's a journal. Write down your feelings in here. This is where you can throw all those feelings in and it gives them a safe place to do that. So I feel like it, it gives them a sense of being able to control something in their life and giving them a voice, um, you know, to tell their story, even if they're telling the story to their journal and nobody else, you know, it gets it out of them and onto paper. Exactly. I really like that. And this, yeah, getting them to just to expose themselves, like I said earlier, and, and that's, that's easier said than done. We all know that, but you know, th th there's some magic in opening up what I like to call that emotional baggage. And, and when I say emotional baggage, uh, I, I, the definition I have for that is traumas and dramas that has happened in your life that has went unresolved. So mm -hmm. situations or trauma, whether it's uh, alcohol, drug related, like that one individual got murdered. I'm sure he has family members that experienced that, that trauma state and, you know, 
that could potentially not have been resolved. Maybe they didn't find the person that did it or however the case may be. But, you know, sometimes exposing that bag, like you said, and writing it down on paper, getting around that that one person that you like and trust and expressing how you're feeling and and just really realizing, hey, you know, there, there's somebody out there that can relate to you, someone out there that can uh, understand that you do have a voice and you have to express it. And and there's something about just holding things stuff in because, you know, it can it can destroy you. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, there's there some things that, you know, I, I never really overcame until I got into my adulthood that happened, you know, well before I was a teenager. But, you know, if, it, if I knew what I knew then, what I know now, you know, opening up and sharing, like you said, the journaling and, and getting around uh, individuals that's willing to listen and, and give good advice to overcome those obstacles, those barriers, that emotional baggage, that's, that truly helps. But, yeah. yeah, I really like the whole concept. Journaling. That's a good one, audience. You got to journal. <laughs> a lot of journaling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most definitely. And as far as, you know, thinking of the youth in general in 2021, like we know the pandemic, COVID-19 is kind of going on. But is there uh, anything that you see that our youth is struggling with right now and something that you can say as far as a tip or technique to help them Take that daily challenge, as I, I mentioned in our mission statement at GNG Podcast. Take the daily challenge of overcoming that obstacle. Is there something that comes to mind that are you? It does. With? Yeah, I, I um, I think that the struggle is um, that's facing our our young people today is being able to have authentic relationships in a virtual world. Mm. And I think, you know, from not being able to do that, whether, you know, and I'm not just saying because of the, the, the pandemic, I'm saying even prior to that, you know, you go places and you see people with their faces and their phones and they're not seeing the world around them and they're not interacting with people and they're not in the moment. And I think when, when you don't have authentic relationships like that, it could lead to a lot of different things. You know, there's bullying online, there's, um, substance abuse that takes the place of a relationship. Um, there, there are all kinds of things that I think lead from not have, being able to have authentic relationships. And when I say virtual world, I don't mean that in pandemic. I mean that um, everywhere, just social media, um, every you know, YouTube, whatever it is, and being so engrossed in that that you're missing connecting with people. Mm -hmm. that, that's hit right on the money this social media um it definitely can it can be a nourishing activity but it all can it also can be something that drowns you you know mentally physically um you know i was talking uh, with a friend earlier and you know we was talking about how you know you can paint whatever picture you want on social media you can be whoever you want whatever you want to uh, display but at the end of the day you know, when those cameras are cut off, you know, we, we all struggle. We all have our ups and downs, our, our trials and tribulations. And again, building those authentic relationships again, when there's a, a world that could be a fake world, looking at Facebook or whatever the case may be, because, you know, I, I even done it myself. You can get on there and you could you could be jealous from somebody's picture or even if they had <laughs> or a car they're driving or a house they have or whatever the case may be. But again, um, this really seek out and and not necessarily come from that judgmental state. That's, that's something that that I'm constantly working on and really uh, asking myself, hey, how is that person off the camera like? Like yeah. how the individual, and and I think that's where that authentic relationship, and even in this virtual world, uh, whoever's listening, as as far as the audience goes, you know, picking up that phone, you know, you know, because I'm bad about it too. I I'm willing to just send a text message instead of making that phone call to really hear yeah. somebody's voice. But <laughs> and 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 I know I know we got to be safe, but you know, have, making those visits and and uh, talking to people one on one because. Yeah, with technology, it's definitely taking over as far as this instant gratification world. You know, it's, it's so many things is just happening. You know, I was actually just talking about the movies, you know, like, you know, how, how is the movie theaters going to come back from this? Because everything is like digital, like on Netflix, right. 
all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, the, definitely the world is going towards that virtual, but we got to clean and make things as authentic as possible. So I, I truly agree with what you shared there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And uh, as far as that teacher, that parent, that coach that's listening to you right now, they have a young person uh, that's struggling with understanding that they're a gift and a gift. And that's the name of this podcast, GNG, meaning, you know, I feel that we're all gifted differently to make a difference, you know, and, and there's something unique that each and every one of us is supposed to share. I truly believe that, Miss Wendy. Um, mm-hmm. You know, out of 7.5 billion people, no one has my fingerprint. No one has your fingerprint. <laughs> I feel like, you know, we're, we're all put here. Our creator put us here to establish a goal to bring a talent or gift to this planet that and they're going to be able to impact that specific individual that I'm not going to be able to impact that you're not going to be able to impact. So I say that to say this. Is there uh, any encouraging words that you can give? you know, a caregiver, parent, teacher that's listening to you right now on looking to inspire that young adult that they have in their life to push forward and really bring their gift to reality, taking that daily challenge of bringing that gift to reality. Well, I I think um, one of the things I think about is attention and time and, um, making uh, making time for somebody, you know, and I, when I talk about authentic relationships, I also mean that, you know, an adult with a child or, or a caregiver um, really spending time with that child and listening and valuing them as a person and respecting, you know, at that particular time, what their views are, what their beliefs are, um, you know, I, I, I wrote a blog called The Nine Gifts of God, and um, I talked about, uh, I have to read it because I, I don't have it memorized, but um, Galatians 22, 23 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And yeah, I love it. And those are the gifts that we can give each other, you mm-hmm. know, if we really, truly want to, you know, be intentional. I really like that. I really like that. That's what, that's one of my favorites. Yes. <laughs> Patience, uh, that's beautifully put. And yeah, that's that's brilliant. What if, what if I know you like the blog? I know you're inspired to uh, potentially get you a book out there. Your closest friend. Bonus question: They was <laughs> going to write a book about you. What would the title be? That's funny. Is that's hard because. Um, I, it could be a lot of different things. Um, one thing I think is I heard a song the other day. Um, there's a song by Alicia Keys called Superwoman. Oh, yeah. Is that, is that the title? Superwoman. That's it. It's called Superwoman. <laughs> and in, this, in the chorus, she says, I'm a superwoman. <laughs> Even when I'm a mess, I still put on a vest with an S on my chest. And it's like, you know, even though things can be going crazy, I still, you know, put forth that effort, still fight through every single day. Um, and I, and I think when I, when I talk to a lot of my friends, that's what they talk about, you know, that I just, I never give up. I have like, I have tenacity and, and uh, regardless of what's going on, I'm constantly pushing forward. So I think that that would be a good title. <laughs> Angelo Superwoman. I like it. <laughs> that's, that's a cool title. I'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. That's really good. And I know, I know you, you've been pouring out amazing value. I'm sure whoever's re- listening to me definitely been taking some copious notes. Um, if you listen to us on Facebook Live on this whole theme, everyone has a story to tell. Tru- truly understand that you do have a story to tell. And, and Miss Wendy has gave some amazing value on how you can begin to start to share and tell your story. And uh, I know this this episode 34 is definitely going to be life changing. And, and those tips and techniques that you did provide. 
hey, we're definitely I look forward to going back to even listening to it and and tr- really applying uh, some of these uh, standards that you've applied to your own life and also challenging other people to apply. And and it, I bring, and it brings me to second to last question. What's new with Wendy going into 2021? Is there anything uh, exciting is going to be happening uh, that the audience should be looking out for? Well, I am uh, in March, you know, you know this, where I'm hoping to finalize my John Maxwell coaching and um, uh, speaker training. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. So so that's the plan. Um, I am working uh, with someone right now to kind of help me develop um, some curriculum for speaking and I'd nice. li- really like to, you know, I'm in the last, you know, using a football term because of the Super Bowl, which, by the way, go Bucks because we're, oh, I'm yeah, a big Bucks fan. Why, yeah, I've been going <laughs> to talk with you about that. I was wondering who you was going for. I wonder if you was pulling for the Chiefs. I don't know. <laughs> well, I grew up in Tampa, so I, I, I have to be a Tampa Bay fan. <laughs> um, but I'm in the final quarter of my career. And um, I'm starting to think about what I want to do. Um, I've got about seven years left before I'm eligible to actually retire, believe it or not. And so with that Chapter 52 kind of uh, theme, I am looking at um, doing something I'm really passionate about. And that's you know speaking, coaching, influencing others, using my life experiences and uh, what I've done with kids and schools and helping others, you know, to do that. So um, this is a year for me to develop that business and that, um, you know, that I hate to call it a business, but it's more like um, my passion so that, you know, when I'm ready to move on to the next chapter, it's it's ready to go. Boom. The super warm is in the house. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, just know that myself will be praying for those endeavors to come to pass. I know you're an amazing individual. Also, again, thank you so much for your time, your effort and blessing GNG podcast uh, with giving amazing gems that we can take and apply to our lives tonight, moving into tomorrow. And I know the sky's the limit for you as far as with John Maxwell. So definitely looking forward to being beside you and, and uh, making that accomplishment, even though it's virtual. Hey, hey it's not going to be in person, but we're going to get to a in person uh, there in uh, Florida. But uh, yeah, so with that and growing with the speaking and coaching, I know you're going to do phenomenal with it. One of the things that I love. John Maxwell says, he said that we should strive to be salt and light to the world. You know, salt makes everything good, regardless of how terrible it tastes. And, you know, in, in, in a dark world, you know, uh, your light is needed. So thank you so much for being salt and light uh, to the world in your area. And and yeah, I look forward to seeing uh, what's next with what, what is next with Miss Mangello uh, moving <laughs> forward. But again, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to go ahead and lead us out here. I told each and every one of you, episode 34 was going to be amazing. Again, uh, leave a comment. Let us know what tip of techniques you took from Wendy Mangello's episode on Everyone Has a Story to Tell. Also, uh, like and subscribe. Share this out. We want to get this information in front of as as many uh, listeners uh, and and develop as much positivity in every area that we can as possible. And I want each and every one of you to stay up with GNG. More episodes coming soon. I want you to do two things for me. I want you to keep that crown on your heart. And please remember this. We are God's echo. I love each and every one of you. Peace. Thank you for listening to G&G Podcast. Remember, you are gifted differently to make a difference. Please visit ChazJacksonSpeaks.org and let's continue to grow together. God bless.